So dear students, good morning to all of you. Uh, today we are taking up uh, uh, next uh, uh, topic. Today we are uh, resuming our third trimester classes after second trimester examination. So today we are taking uh, a session on uh, Markowitz model or it's called portfolio theory. The portfolio theory is uh, given by Harry Markowitz uh, who uh, is the Nobel Prize winner and we uh, he received a Nobel Prize for his contribution in 1990. We have seen two things so far. One is uh, the how we can analyze individual security. That is what we call it the relationship between risk and return of individual security. We have seen that. And what is uh, return and what uh, the calculation of return and we have seen uh, what is risk and calculation of uh, uh, systematic risk and total risk we have seen. And then we looked at the relationship between risk and return of individual security. The main focus uh, today is how an investor can build a portfolio by reducing his total risk through diversification. We have seen earlier the risk cannot be eliminated, risk cannot be uh, reduced and risk can be only managed. So how an individual investor manage his individual risk? through diversification. So as according to Harry Markowitz, don't put uh, all the legs, all the eggs in one basket. Don't uh, put all the eggs in one basket and divide uh, the eggs into different uh, baskets so that uh, the likelihood of breaking the eggs is reduced. So that only through diversification, uh, the risk can be uh, managed. So according to uh, Markowitz, the risk cannot be eliminated, the risk can only be managed through diversification. So today uh, we are going into detail about the diversification of uh, the investment or diversification of various investment so that the risk can be uh, reduced. So uh, this entire uh, discussion today is based on uh, the paper on uh, uh, quantification of risk by Harry Markowitz uh, in 1950. So he uh, waited for 40 years uh, to get his Nobel Prize in 1990 uh, on his paper on quantification of risk. So before 1950, uh, there was no quantification of risk. Risk cannot be quantified. So risk is uh, isn't a, a qualitative in nature. It has to be uh, quantified. So the, the concept of quantification of risk has come after the paper by uh, Mr. Harry Markowitz. So today we are looking at uh, the, his research paper on quantification of risk uh, on uh, uh, by the Harry Markowitz. So look at this. Uh, uh, first one we, we look at the portfolio return. First one we look at portfolio return. And he said uh, the return of a portfolio uh, is the the multiplication of the weight of a stock and the return of a stock. That is, portfolio return is equal to portfolio return is equal to Ri into Wi. The return of the portfolio is equal to Ri into Wi. That means, if you have a 1 lakh rupees, uh, this 1 lakh rupees is invested in 5 different stocks. The, For example, 20% of 1 lakh is A, 20,000 is invested in uh, stock A. 30% uh, of funds, they 30,000 is invested in stock B. Okay. So like this, uh, you have a weight of a stock and then the return of a stock. So if you multiply the weight of a stock with the return of a stock, we get the return of the portfolio. So the first one is portfolio return. So how do we get the portfolio return? That's a multiplicate. When we multiply the return and the weight, we will get the portfolio return. The second one, uh, second important concept here is Covariance. Covariance of return. How do we get covariance of return? Covariance is uh, denotes the co the movement of a return, the movement of the stock returns. So the covariance does not uh, uh, denote whether the st uh, particular uh, stock return is increasing or decreasing. If it is a positive covariance, it, it means both the returns are in a, both the stock returns are the same direction. If it is a negative variance, it denotes 
both the uh, stocks are moving in a different, I mean, opposite direction. That's what the covariance here, uh, all of us need to understand. Uh, here we are looking at the portfolio. We don't look at the uh, individual stock, we are looking at the portfolio. So the entire discussion today is the portfolio. Uh, that means portfolio means more than one stock. So you cannot have a one stock uh, that, that, that means a portfolio. There must be a two stocks uh, to form a portfolio. So today we are looking at a portfolio return. That means there will be a two stocks. So how do we get the portfolio return? Multiply the weight and the return. See, for example, uh, you have two stocks. Uh, you have invested 50% each uh, in each stock. That is uh, 1 lakh rupees you have. Uh, 50,000 rupees each. So that is 0.5. So 0.5 into 18% for one stock plus 0.5 into 20%. You got uh, from another stock. That is 9 plus 10. That is 19% is the portfolio return. Okay. The second discussion today is the covariance of return. So what is called covariance? Covariance denotes the movement of a stock return. If it is positive, both are moving in the same direction. If it is negative, it is moving in the opposite direction. It is not moving in the same direction. That is called the covariance. So how do we calculate the covariance of return? So I mean, you will be given put, I mean, uh, uh, probability of return. So PI into, that is, uh, you have a, a return RI minus R bar 1. There will be two returns, there will be two stocks, that is Ri minus R bar 2, that is plus Pi Ri minus R bar 2, that is second situation, okay, R bar 2, then Ri minus R bar 2, like this we have to calculate for a different uh, situation. Okay, So when we do the case, uh, we will have a great understanding. So here what we should know is uh, what is called covariance. So covariance denotes the movement of a stock return. If it is positive, uh, both stocks are moving in the same direction. If it is negative, it is moving uh, in the opposite direction. It is not moving in the right direction. Then third one, third one we need to see is the correlation. Correlation, that is called R. R denotes the uh, correlation between two stock returns R denotes the correlation between two stock returns if it is the correlation always uh, ranges between plus 1 and minus 1 minus 1 and plus 1 always it ranges between minus 1 and plus 1 we have seen uh, this uh, correlation when we have discussed about uh, uh, CAPM uh, nevertheless we will look at uh, what is called correlation correlation uh, denotes the relationship between two stock returns, relationship between any two variables. So it can be uh, sales and uh, profit or it can be sales and uh, promotional expenditure. But here uh, the two variables are returns. So it, here we look at the stock returns. So what is the relation between two stock returns? That's what the variable here. So if it is a minus one, what does it mean? It means there is a perfect negative correlation between two stock returns. If it is plus 1, it, it denotes there is a perfect positive correlation between two stock returns. If it is 0.9, it denotes there is a, a positive, there is a positive correlation between two stock returns. 0.9. If it is more than 0.6, we can say there is a high positive correlation between two stock returns. If it is uh, between uh, when uh, uh, there is a 0.1 to uh, 0.6, we can say there is a low positive correlation between uh, two stock returns. If it is a uh, minus point, uh, zero 0.09, we can say there is a high negative correlation between two stock returns. If it is a uh, minus point 0.6 to minus point 0.9. If it is between a uh, minus point 0.1 to minus point uh, uh, 0.6, we can say there is a low low negative correlation between uh, stock two stock returns. So it's a uh, correlation denotes a uh, correlation always uh, denotes the relationship between uh, two variables. Here two variables are two stock returns. So how do we calculate uh, the correlation? Correlation is equal to correlation between two stock returns. That is 1 and 2 uh, is equal to covariance of uh, 1 and 2. That we have calculated already here. Covariance we have calculated already here. So covariance divided by 
sine derivation of a into sine derivation of b, sine derivation of 1 and sine derivation of 2. Okay, so we know what is sine derivation, sine derivation measures the uh, to total uh, risk and we have calculated the sine derivation earlier uh, in our discussion when we uh, talked about uh, the total risk. So we, we know the sine derivation, so uh, correlation we need to calculate, so we have calculated the covariance. So covariance of two stock returns divided by sine derivation of uh, two stock returns that will give us the correlation between two stock returns. Okay. So these are three important uh, 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 topics that we need to know uh, before we uh, go for portfolio uh, calculation, portfolio return calculation. One is how to calculate the portfolio return. So portfolio return means uh, multiply the weights with the return. Okay. Then how do we get uh, uh, covariance? Covariance denotes the movement of the stock returns. Uh, it is uh, moving in a whether it's moving in the same direction or an opposite direction. Okay. And then correlation denotes the relationship between two stock returns. Uh, how to calculate uh, the covariance of two stock returns divided by a uh, standard deviation of uh, uh, two stock returns that will give us the correlation which denotes the relation between two stock returns. And then what is the relationship between uh, correlation and uh, the uh, risk? What is the relation between correlation and risk? The If it is a, a plus one, that means the risk is very high. That means uh, if it is the, 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 that's what we call it the risk continuum. Risk continuum. There is minus one and plus one. Minus one and plus one. Here, if it is a plus one, the risk is maximum. If it is the plus one, the risk is maximum. Maximum risk. So, uh, through diversification, through diversification, risk cannot be minimized. Through diversification, risk cannot be minimized. If it is a maximum, if it is plus one and the risk is maximum there and the risk is reduced so if it is if it is a point 0.9 the risk is reduced point 0.8 risk is reduced so if it reaches the minus one the risk becomes zero risk becomes zero so uh, the risk is starting from minus one to plus one if it is a minus one the risk is zero if it is a minus point 0.1 if it is minus 0.1, uh, the risk starts. The risk starts increasing. The risk starts increasing, and if it, when it touches plus 1, the risk is maximum. Okay, so that is the relationship between correlation and the risk. The risk is maximum when the correlation between two stock return is plus 1. The, the risk is zero. The correlation between two stock return is minus 1. If there is a perfect negative correlation, the risk is zero. If there is a perfect positive correlation, the risk is maximum. So the risk is the risk starts increasing from minus one to plus one. So if it is plus one, the risk cannot be minimized through diversification. The risk cannot be minimized through diversification because the risk is maximum there. So when you look at the risk-free return, I mean uh, treasury bills or uh, treasury bills return or we can see government securities or guilt edged securities, we call it. Uh, the risk will be uh, a correlation between two stock returns will be always minus one because the risk is zero there. Okay, so that is the uh, how we can relate the correlation with the uh, risk. That's what we call it the risk uh, continuum. Okay, so with this uh, input, we will go for a case, case uh, calculation. A case is given here. So look at this, uh, the state of nature is given, that is the uh, different state of nature, it can be a, a boom conditions or uh, the recessionary conditions, it is given there and probability is given. Uh, the return on stock uh, asset 1 is given and asset 2 is given okay? and uh, if it is 0.1 probability, uh, the return is minus 10% and 5%, it's probability that, 10% uh, probability that the return of the stock 1 uh, is minus 10% and uh, the probability of stock 2 is 5%. 30% uh, probability that the return from stock 1 is 15%, the return from the stock uh, 2 is 12%. 30% probability that the uh, return from the stock 1 is 18%, 19% and 20% probability that uh, the stock return is increased to 22 and 15 and 10% probability that the stock return is increased to 27 and 12. 
So uh, this is the uh, the major limitation of Markowitz. That's why it took about four decades uh, for him to get his uh, Nobel Prize because uh, the entire uh, this calculation is based on only two stocks. But in a portfolio, in a mutual fund, uh, we cannot build a mutual fund with the two stocks. We cannot build a mutual fund with the two stocks. Mutual fund means you should have minimum 10 stocks. For any mutual fund when you take, uh, we have, uh, as, as I was mentioning earlier, uh, previous sessions, uh, we have about 3000 schemes, 3000 mutual fund schemes we have. Uh, which are all operated by 45 uh, mutual fund houses in our country. 45 mutual fund companies we have. That's what we call it AMC, asset management companies we have in our country, uh, which manages about more than 10 lakh crore, more than 10 lakh crore. That is the asset, asset under management. That's what we call it AUM, the asset under management of all these 45 mutual fund companies in our country, uh, is above uh, 10 lakh crore. So when we build a mutual fund, we cannot uh, uh, build a mutual fund with the two stocks. It should have more than uh, 10 stocks, minimum 10 stocks. So when you look at any mutual fund, uh, the mutual fund should have a 10 stocks. Then only then it is called portfolio. So uh, when you look at the Harry Markowitz, the entire paper, it is only for two stocks. Only for two stocks. That is a major limitation of uh, Harry Markowitz. Uh, then uh, William Sharp has come out with the another model. That's what next discussion. After finishing this, we are going for a Sharp index model, wherein you can build a portfolio with a 10 stocks or within 15 stocks. See, for example, if you have a four stocks, if you have four stocks uh, in a, a portfolio here, so a correlation we cannot calculate for uh, more than two stocks. It's a correlation means correlation between uh, two stocks only. So if you have four stocks in a portfolio, so we need to have a correlation between one and two, then correlation between uh, two and three, then correlation between one and three, three stocks. There are three stocks in a portfolio, correlation between one and two, correlation between one and three, correlation between two and three. If it is four stocks in a portfolio, how to calculate correlation? Correlation between one and two, correlation between one and three, correlation between one and four. Then correlation between 2 and 3, correlation between 2 and 4, then correlation between 3 and 4. So look at if, if the portfolio has got 5 stocks, how to calculate the correlation? It's a very difficult task. It's a very, very difficult task. So the major limitation of Harry Markowitz, this particular model can be employed only when the portfolio is having 4 stocks. If it is more than four stocks, we cannot calculate uh, the correlation between two stocks. And when we look at the portfolio risk, we need to calculate the portfolio risk. The tomorrow discussion will be portfolio risk. So portfolio risk means if it is two stocks, we need to calculate portfolio. If it is three stocks, we need to calculate the portfolio risk. If it is four stocks, we need to calculate the portfolio risk. So, okay. So when the, the stocks uh, is increasing in a portfolio, then the amount of uh, effort involved in calculating this portfolio return risk is highly, highly uh, increasing. So that is the major limitation of this Harry Markowitz. The Harry Markowitz model, uh, we can use it in a portfolio uh, return and risk calculation only when the portfolio is having a, a maximum of four stocks. If it is more than four stocks, uh, we'll have to use a short uh, index model. That is the next step our discussion. So here two stocks is given. So we need to calculate standard deviation between two stock returns, standard deviation between two stock returns, and we need to calculate covariance between two stock returns, and we need to calculate the uh, correlation between uh, two stock returns. So let us move forward. Uh, state of nature: one, two, three, four, five. Uh, tell me, RI probability? PA is over point. 10. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0.10 0.30 0.30 0.20 0.20 0.20 0.20 0.20 the sum of probability will be equal to always 1 sigma pa is equal to always 1 then r1 r1 is equal to always 1 sigma pa is equal to always 1 then r1 that is r1 stock return 1 how much 
minus 10 plus minus 10 minus 15 15 18 18 20 22 22 27 27 then R2 5 5 12 12 19 19 15 15 12 okay so first we need to calculate the average return so we have seen earlier discussions when the probability is given how to calculate the average return we have seen earlier uh, just multiply probability with the return probability with the return just multiply probability with the return that is p i r 1 p i r 2 multiply with probability with the return that is 0.1 into minus 10 just calculate take the calculator kindly calculate please tell me the figure okay uh, 0.3 into 15 0.3 into 80 multiply just multiply the values that is tell me the values 0 0.1 0 0.1 into uh, minus 10 tell me the values minus 1, minus one. Uh, 0 0.3 into 15 4.5 uh, minus 3 uh, 0 0.3 into 18 5.4 5 .4. 5 .4. Uh, 0 0.2 into 22 4.4 4. 4. 4. Uh, 0 0.1 into 2.7 then 0 0.1 into 0 -1, 0 0 -1 into minus uh, 1 0.1 into uh, 5 uh, 0 0.1 into 5 that is minus no 0.1 into 5 that is 0 0.5 correct? yeah 5, 5, 5. 0.5 0.5 uh, 0 0.3 into 12 3.6 0.3 into 19 5.7 5.7 0.2 into 15 3 0.1 into 12 1.2 just add this sigma pi r1 sigma pi r2 Sigma PI R1, Sigma PI R2. How much comes? Sigma PI R2. How much? First one is 17, correct? 17. Second one is? Second one is? So, this is called R bar 1. 17. R bar 1 is 17. Next. 14. Second one is R bar 2 is 14. Please understand. Please listen. Uh, please, uh, when, we, when we are given actual return, we add the actual return divided by number of years. When we are given actual return. When we are given probability return, expected return, uh, the calculation of the average return will be just multiply probability with the return. When you just multiply with the probability with the return, add this, that will give us the average return. Don't we need not divide it by number of years or we need not divide by the state of nature. Here there are five. Uh, please don't divide it by five. The of the uh, cumulative figure, the aggregate figure itself is called the average return. So average return is 17% and 14%. Now, now we need to calculate the deviation. We need to calculate standard deviation. So deviation, that is, we have seen earlier, R1 minus R bar 1, R2, R2 minus R bar 2. Okay? That is, minus 10, minus 17, minus 27, 15, 17, minus 2, 18, 17, 1, 22, 17, 5, 27, 17, 10. Then R2 minus R bar 2. That is 5 minus 14, minus 9. 12 minus 14, minus 2. 19 minus 14, 5. 15 minus 14, 1. 12 minus 14, minus 2. Square it. R2, 
R1 minus R bar 1 whole square R2 R2 minus R bar 2 whole square whole square square it that is uh, minus 27 square 729 729 2 square 4 1 square 1 5 square 25 10 square 100 minus 9 square 81 4 25 1 4 Now, now we need to calculate standard deviation. When the actual return is given, I'm just revising you. When the actual return is given, uh, add this and divide by n minus one. That's what we have seen earlier for calculating standard deviation. But when the actual, the expected return is given, multiply pi into r1 minus r bar one whole square. Pi into r1 minus r bar one whole square. Then for second one. Pi into R2 minus R bar 2 whole square. Okay, multiply. It is 0 0.1 into 729. 0 0.1 into 729. 729, sorry. 0 0.1 into 729. 0 0.1 into. No, 0 0.1. Probability. 0 0.1 into 729. 0 0.1 into 729. That is. 72.9, correct? Hello? Can you can you please multiply? Some of you can multiply and tell me. 0.3 into 4, 0.3 into 1, 0.2 into 25, 0.1 into 100. 72.9 72.9 Second one is 0 0.3 into 4 0.3 into 4 1.2 0 0.3 into 1 0 0.3 0 0.2 into 25 5.5 5 0.1 into 100 10 then 0.1 into 81 8.1 8.1 0.3 into 4 1.2 again then 25 into 0.3 7.5 then 0.2 into 5 0.5 then 0.2 into 1 Point 0.2 then point 0.1 into 4 point 0.4 okay add this sigma sigma pi r1 minus r bar 1 whole square that is sigma pi r1 minus r bar 2 whole square how much comes totally Sigma aggregate total total this calculate this eighty nine point eighty nine point four this is called sand division square this is called sand division square or we call it variance this is called we call it variance Sand division square or variance? 17.4. 17 so, sand division is equal to root of 89.4. Sand division is equal to root of 17.4. Sand division. Yeah, I'll, I'll take the questions late. Later, I will take the question. 89.4, 17.4. How much comes? 
root of 89.4 anybody around 9 point uh, so nine point four seven of one nine nine point four six nine point four six and seven division of one seven division of two seventeen point four it will be around four four point four point one seven that is seven division of two okay so we have calculated the average return we have calculated the uh, seven division then we have to calculate covariance between two stock returns. Please look at this. Uh, I'm just putting a column number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Covariance is equal to, so PI multiply with the PI with the deviations. PI with the deviations, that is 1 into 1 into 6 into 7. 1 into 6 into 7. That's called that's what we have seen. Multiply probability with the deviations. Multiply probability with the deviations. That is 0.1 into uh, 20 minus 27 into minus 9. Okay? 0.1 into minus 27 into minus 9. How much comes? 1 into 6 into 7. 1 into 6 into 7. Point 0.1 into minus 27 into point minus 9. How much comes? How much comes? 1 into 6 into 7. 24.3. 24.3. Second one. Point 0.3 into minus 2 into minus 2 a 4 4 into 0 0.3 1.2 1.2 then 0 0.3 into uh, 1 into 5 that is 5 1.5 0 0.3 into 5 into 0 0.3 1.5 then again uh, 1 1 1 into 5 into 0 0.2, 1. Then 0 0.1 into minus 20. Minus 20. Minus, minus 2. No? Yes, minus, minus, two. Two. minus 2. Minus 2. So the total is that is sigma pi r1 minus r bar 1 into R2 minus R bar 2 that is called covariance. How much comes? Anybody? 24.3 26 How much comes? 26 26 that is called covariance. So covariance of 1 comma 2 is 26 covariance of 1 comma 2 is 26 now, how to calculate correlation? How to get correlation? So, correlation is R12, I'm just writing here, that is covariance of 1, 2 divided by sand division of 1 and sand division of 2. So, that is covariance of 1 and 2 is 26 divided by sand division of 1 is 9.46 into 4.17. Okay, so correlation is R12, 26 divided by 9.46 into 4.17 26 divided by 9.46 into 4.17 Watch comes? 26 divided by uh, 36, yeah, around 36. 0.659. That is high positive correlation between two stock returns. That is a high positive correlation between two stock returns. So let, let us uh, look at uh, once again the complete uh, uh, steps. Uh, we will be given the probability and the two stock returns. So, first step we need to calculate the average return. We need to calculate the average return. So how do we get the average return? 
multiply pi with the return multiply pi with the return that is 0.1 into minus 10 0.1 into 5 multiply that get the aggregate the total is called average return the total is called average return unlike actual return we need not divide it by the number of years the total itself is called the average return then then we need to get the deviation that is r1 minus r bar 1 get the deviation r1 minus r bar 1 r2 minus r bar 2 get the deviation square the deviation square the deviation and then with the square the deviation multiply with the probability multiply with the probability that is pi into r1 minus r bar 1 whole square pi into r2 minus r bar 2 whole square get the total get the aggregate that aggregate itself is called variance the aggregate itself is called variance we have seen all this calculation earlier we need not divide it by n minus 1 as we have done for actual return okay so you just aggregate so that is called variance square the variance you will get standard deviation now how to get the covariance so covariance already i mean uh, values are given you just get the values and just multiply that is pi into the deviation that is r1 minus r bar 1 r2 minus r bar 2 deviations with the pi not as quite deviations deviations with the pi we will get the i mean covariance for each state and nature uh, get the total that will give you the covariance so here the covariance is positive what does it mean both the stocks are moving in the same direction both the stocks are moving in the same direction look at this look at the first stock return minus 10 and 5 look at the second situation increasing both stocks increasing here increasing we'll look at second increasing here and again here 18 19 increasing again 22 15 are uh, here slightly decreasing here slightly decreasing and here increasing slightly i mean uh, 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 decreasing here okay so uh, more or less out of five out of five state of nature more or less uh, uh, the stocks are moving in the same direction that's why it is given 26 so if it is positive both the stocks are moving in the same direction now how to get the correlation so correlation is covariance divided by sand division of one into sand division of two so covariance is 26 uh, divide by sand division of 1, it is sand division of 2, 9.46 and 4.17, that is called 0.659. So, what does it mean? Uh, there is a high positive correlation between two stock returns. So, please write, please write, uh, there is uh, uh, covalence is negative, positive, so that both the stocks are moving in the same direction. Second one, second one, correlation is uh, 0.659, uh, both the uh, there is a high positive correlation between two stock returns. So with that, uh, you give the conclusion. Okay, so take up the second question. Uh, that is the, I mean, second case. Uh, probability 0.1, that is, uh, return of stock asset is 1, 2, 5 percent, and uh, asset 2 is to, uh, 0 percent. And uh, state of nature 0 0.3, 10 percent, 8 percent. Uh, then uh, state of nature 0 0.5, 15 percent, 18 percent. Then probability 0 0.1, uh, 20 percent, and 26 percent. So same thing, kindly calculate. Get me the values. Yeah, get me the values. So four, four state of nature. That is uh, point 0.1. Please tell me the values. Point 0.1. Point 0.1 into point 0.1. Five percent, zero percent. Five zero. Second one. Point two, no. 0.2 sorry 0 0.3 0 0.3 are R1 is 10% 8% 10% 8% 0 0.3 and 0.5 then 0 0.5 0 0.5 probability is 15% 18% 15 18 then we have 0 0.1 20, 26. 0 0.1, 20, 26. Multiply pi into r1. Multiply pi into r1. 0 0.1 into 5. 0 0.5. 0 0.3 into 10. 3. 0 0.5 into 5. 7.5. 0 0.5 into 
point one into twenty two. Okay, then point one into zero zero, point three into eight two point four, point five into eighteen nine, point one point one into twenty six two point six. Okay, get the values. That is sigma pi r i, sigma pi r i, r two i, r one i, r two i. How much comes? This is called r bar one, r bar two. Please find out the values. Uh, eight, eight plus three, eleven, thirteen. Correct? Anybody? First one. First one is thirteen. Thirteen. Uh, two point four plus two point six. That is uh, five. Five plus nine, fourteen. Second one is fourteen. Correct? Yes. Anybody? Yeah. Yes. Is it right? Fourteen. Fourteen. Okay. Now R R R one minus R bar one. R two minus R bar two. R2 minus R bar 2, R1 minus R bar 1. That is R1 minus R bar 1 is 5 minus 5 minus 13 minus 8. 10 minus 13 minus 3. 15 minus 13 2. 20 minus 13 7. R2 minus R bar 2. 0 minus 14 minus 14. 8 minus 14 minus 6. 18 minus 14, 4. 26 minus 14, 12. Square it. Square it. 64, 9, 4, 49. 14, 14 square. 196, 36, 16, 144. Correct. Please check. Then multiply pi. Multiply pi into r a minus r bar one whole square. That is point one into sixty four. Point one into sixty four. Six point four. Let's check. Point three into nine. Two point seven. Point five into four. Two. Point one into Forty-nine, four point nine. Please check. Pi into R bar two. There is point one into one ninety-six, nineteen point six. Point three into thirty-six. Point three into thirty-six. How much comes? Anybody? Ten point eight. Ten point eight. Ten point eight, sixteen into point five eight, and one forty four into point one, one point four, a fourteen point four. Okay, so get the total. That is sigma pi r one minus r bar one whole square. Sigma pi r1 minus r bar 2 whole square. How much comes? How much comes? What is the total? Anybody? Get the total. Sixteen, sir. First one is sixteen, is it? Right? Yes. First one is sixteen. Okay. Second one is that is called sine division square. Sine division square is sixteen. Okay. Second one. Fifty-two point eight. That is sine division square is fifty-two point eight. So sine division will be. Sine division will be. Sine division is root sixteen four. Sine division of one. Sine division of two. Sine division of two. 
root 7.27 okay now get the covariance get the covariance that is 1 into 6 into 7 that is 0.1 into minus 8 into minus 14 point 0.1 minus 8 minus 14 how much comes anybody 11.2 how much 11.2 11.2 uh, who is answering Sharon Sharon okay, okay. then point 0.3 into 0.3 into uh, minus 3 into minus 6 that is uh, 18, 18, 5.4 cut yes 5.4 then 8 into 0.5 4 12 in 12 into 84 8.4 correct 8.4 correct Yes. So it is called covariance. Covariance one comma two is equal to that is twenty nine, correct? Is it twenty nine? Yes. Twenty nine. This twenty nine covariance of one comma two is twenty nine. So the correlation is. Correlation R12 is equal to covariance of 1 comma 2 divided by sand division of 1 and sand division of 2. Covariance of 1 comma 2 is 29 divided by 4 into 7.27. 7.27 that is R12. Correlation 1 2 give me point. Uh, 27, 29 divided by 28, so point 0.8, how much comes? Point 0.9? Point 0.99. Nine. Point 0.99, point nine nine. that will be close to 1. So R12 is 1. Perfect, perfect positive correlation. So you can write the inference, please write the inference. The covariance between uh, stock return 1 and stock return 2 is 29. Please write. Covariance of stock return 1 and stock return 2 is 29. So that is both the stock returns are moving in the same direction. Both the stock returns are moving in the same direction. The correlation between stock return 1 and stock return 2 is 0.99 which is equivalent to 1. There is a perfect positive correlation between two stock returns. That is a perfect positive correlation between two stock returns. That is point 0.1. That is 1. So with this, we are completing the calculation of portfolio return and covariance of return and correlation. Thank you.